here we go. All right, so 2018 AP Calculus Unit 2 test review, and I had two previous videos that explained the free response questions, and then I already explained question one. I kind of started question two, but I'm actually going to restart it. Ready, get set, here we go. Question two, this equation, it's all silly, right? It's all mixed up. I got x, x minus 1 half equals negative 2 times y plus 4 represents the equation of the tangent line. Half the test is the equation of the tangent line. The other half is analyzing f and f prime, going back and forth between the original and the derivative. Half the test, equation of the tangent line. When, and then it gives us an x value, and I'm, um, here, I don't want you to see the answer. So what is the value of g prime of negative one? What you need to have memorized, or you need to annotate your question. So underline g prime of negative one, <clears throat> excuse me, g prime of negative one, you need to know what that means. You need to know exactly what that means. We know the prime means derivative, and we know we've plugged a number into a derivative. So when you plug a number into the derivative, what do you get? What plops out? Oh my goodness. Slope of tangent line at x equals negative 1. Very good. Let's go back. What are we supposed to find? Oh, that we're supposed to find that. Slope of the tangent line. Now, did they give us an original equation to take the derivative and plug in negative 1? No, that would be easy, wouldn't it? They didn't give us like a g. Did they give us a g function? No. They gave us an equation that represents the equation of the tangent line. Okay, so this is the tangent line, and I'm trying to find the slope of the tangent line. Tangent line? Slope of the tangent line. Is the slope negative 2? How come the slope is not negative 2? What does it need to, what form does it need to be in to find the slope of the tangent line? y equals mx plus b. So if it looked like this, then the slope would be in front of the x. So is this in y equals mx plus b right now? Can we turn it into that? All right, so tangent line, make it look like this, then we'll get the slope of the tangent line. All right. What do we need to do? I'm going to distribute that negative 2 first. And then I'm going to move everything to the correct side. So the negative 2y's are going to become positive 2y's. The x will be negative x when I move the side. And I'm going to add a half. So if I have negative 8 and I add a half, it's going to be negative 7 and a half, right? Okay. Is y by itself yet? No. How do I get y by itself? Okay. What I see so many students in the history of being a math teacher for the hundreds of years I've been alive. I see this work on this line of math and then I see the student write this down. Okay, what's the, why is that wrong? Okay. This is a negative one divided by two in front of the x, minus, who cares? We don't really care what that number is, okay? Because what's our goal? Our goal is to find the slope of the tangent line, which will be the number in front of x. So conclusion, g prime of negative 1 is negative 1 half. Do you see how there's annotating in math? It didn't ask for the slope of the tangent line. It asked for g prime of negative 1. 
So you had to say g prime of negative 1 is the slope of the tangent line, and what do I need to do to find that? Okay. All right, let's go to number 3. Here we go. Um, read number 3. All right, number 3. Uh, the line tangent to the graph of f at the point 1, 7 also passes through this point. What is the value of this? Again, just like before, what did we claim the value of g prime of negative 1? Slope of the tangent line. What's this going to be then? Slope of the tangent line. Um, slope of tan line. I just said um. I'm going to try to not say um. So, hi, if a, if a la la la, if it goes through this point and it goes through that point, we need to find the slope of the tangent line. Yes? So how do we do that? y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. And I put a random parenthesis. What is that going to be? Negative 9 over negative 3. Negative divided by a negative is positive. Double check the question. Did they want the normal line? Did they want perpendicular? The line tangent to the graph? Ba -da 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 -da. So pretty straightforward, yeah? Okay. Same question as 2. You understand? Same question, but you had to do something different. Number 4. If f equals this, what is the slope of the tangent line to the graph when x equals 1? So same question, but we're given something different. So we're given f. Do I have room? I have room. Um, so what do we need to do to get the slope of the tangent line? Well, we need to find f prime. So same thing. Do you see how these are switching? Okay, so I have f, but it's not ready for me to take the derivative yet. Our next unit, we're going to learn how to take more derivatives. But right now we only know the power rule, so we have to rewrite this, which I think is fun. It's like you're still a child, you still get to do these light fun things before reality hits you. And it it goes away. I don't know what I'm trying to say because it's mon it's Monday, Monday. But that's all right. Okay. Did I foil this correctly? And now I'm going to distribute this negative three x to all the pieces. I'm going to do it correctly. Negative three x times positive four x. Negative three x times positive four. All right, are we done with the calculus? Uh, no, we haven't even started. All we did was rewrite f. Here we go, f prime. Go, find the derivative. 3 times negative 3. 2 times negative 12. Subtract 1. And then negative 12x, the derivative of negative 12x is negative 12. All right, now that we have the derivative, we're trying to find the slope of the tangent line, so we need to plug in the x value into the derivative and find our numerical answer. Here we go. If it were a positive 1 or a 0, we could probably do it in our head, but a negative 1. Okay, negative 1 squared times negative 9 will stay negative 9. Do you agree? because it's negative 9 times positive 1. Negative 24 times negative 1 is positive 24 minus 12. Negative 9 plus 24 minus 12 would be, final answer, 3. Here we go. We're going to just keep going. You ready? Get set. Stop talking. Classes. Here we go. The derivative. Theta is x, okay? What's the derivative? You should have the derivative of the square root of x memorized. 
So the derivative of the square root of theta is 1 over, but instead of 1, we have a 2. So 2 over what? 2 square root theta, okay? The derivative of cosine is negative sine, so the derivative of 3 cosine is negative 3 sine. That was easy, now pick the right answer. Uh, none of them have the same answer. So you need to analyze what happened here. We had two terms and now we have one term. So what did they do? They combined the two terms together by getting a common denominator. Can you eliminate two wrong answers? What's it, what can we eliminate? A and C because they have plus signs. Do you agree 2 divided by 2 is 1? Okay, watch. To add two terms together, all right, so we need a common denominator. The denominator here is the square root of theta, and this one doesn't have that. So what I'm going to do is, just like if it was 2, I would multiply top and bottom by 2, but it's square root theta. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by square root theta. So final answer, we're going to have one fraction with one denominator, and I have a 1 minus 3 sine theta square root theta. So what's the final answer here? D. Okay. How'd they cheat on B or shortcut on B, like they just combine the top without getting the common denominator? All right, you're going to see this question many times on the test review, so it will be on the test. I love this question. I think it's fun. We're given the derivative, which means we didn't have to find the derivative ourselves. Normally we find the derivative and then factor and solve, but we were already given the derivative here. And what else is nice about it? It's factored, yeah? So it's already factored for us. Where are we going to get a relative max? Uh, ready? We're going to get a relative max when we go from increasing to decreasing, when the derivative switches from positive to negative. Okay, when we're given a derivative, we have to find the critical numbers. So the critical numbers occur when the derivative is equal to zero. So you tell me, what are the x values? What are the solutions? Anytime you have an x in front, you're going to get a solution of x equals zero. And the x plus two gives us a critical number of negative two. These are critical numbers. Remember that definition? That's where the max and mins happen. We're going to make our little sign chart. Oh, do not circle B right now, okay? We don't know if these are max, these could be max, min, or neither. So we're not sure yet. And the question only wants where is the maximum? So what's a number less than negative two? So negative three times negative three times negative three plus two squared. So a negative times a negative is a positive. And then what happens every time you square something? You get positive. So we have a positive times a positive is a positive. So the derivative is positive, greater than zero. What's the number between negative two and zero? So we're gonna plug in negative one. I'm running out of time. Negative times a negative is positive times a positive, uh-oh. We have, a, we have another positive, so is there a max or min here? No, so that would be neither. What's a number greater than zero? Plug that into the derivative, and we get a negative times a positive, which is negative. So here, we have seconds left. Increasing, decreasing, where is our maximum? At zero only. Be ready, it could be this, it could be never, okay? The question could say, where's your minimum? And there isn't one, all right?